All right, building your congregation, building your congregation. This has been one of my greatest challenges. This has been one of my greatest challenges. Turning attenders into members. Turning attenders into members. I want us to know the difference and I want us to know the, the importance of why we should push membership. And then of course, it's India. So we have to qualify and define what membership also means. And I want us to be clear about that as well. And I have found membership extremely beneficial to have it and uh, in terms of all. Now, one thing I want to say before we move forward. This will only make sense. This will only seem beneficial if you're putting this whole new strategy into place. If it's the same 40, 50, 100, you know, your own congregation, same family, same faces, same everything. Nothing has changed in terms of strategy, but you're you know but you're trying to implement this it's not going to make any sense it only makes sense if you're working through the circles Sunday morning has become evangelistic now you're working in purposes and you're appointing people and uh, moving people in the in the you know in the way of the purposes uh, according to purposes structuring according to purpose budgeting if you're doing that then only is this going to make sense all of it uh, but if you're going to go home and just keep everything the same then there's no point even making the changes. I mean, you can brighten the lights, but you know, it's not going to make so much of a difference. Now, you are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven, but you are members of God's very own family and you belong in God's household with every other believer. Romans 12, 5, in Christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others look carefully at the language there is no institutional language here there is no structural language here there is no organizational language it's very organic very biological you know it's very natural he says you are no longer strangers to God and foreigners to heaven but what are you you are members of God's first of all family Two, you belong to God and you belong with everyone else then in Romans he says in Christ inside Christ in the body of Christ we are many we are many members but we are all one body and we are each important to the body each one belongs to you belong to me and I belong to you so when we talk about membership this is the membership we're talking about. We're not talking about membership of a society, membership of an organization, of an institution, of a mega church or a, not a mega church, a, a mainline church or a, not, we're not talking about subscriptions. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the covenant between people. Okay, let's begin. <clears throat> Building your congregation. How do you turn members, uh, attenders into members? Excuse me. How do you turn attenders into members? Number one, we want to create a climate where people want to join. They want to become a member. <clears throat> the other day I went to, I visited a gym. I love visiting gyms. You feel good. You can tell people I went to gym. But I, I was visiting a bit, but I didn't like it. You know, it just seemed very disorganized and it seemed very, you know, it's just like weights lying all over the place and it was all crouched up. There's not enough place to walk. You feel you're going to stub your toe on something and, and, and the, the bathrooms and, the, you know, facilities were like all really jammed up. I didn't like it at all. But there's other gyms I've gone to and I'm like, ah, oh, I like the way it's spaced out. I like the way. And immediately, based on that experience and the way the guy spoke to me and the way uh, they explain the benefits oh yeah, I want to join you I want to join you and sometimes even if it's more expensive you're willing to pay because you want to join when people come to church what is the main reason they're willing to join want to join what is the climate they pick up because of which they want to join the two things people crave the most is love and acceptance the two things people are looking for the most is love and 
acceptance. When you're looking in a community, when you're looking at a church, when you're looking for a family, you're looking for love, you're looking for acceptance. By this all men will know that you are my disciples. How? If you love one another, accept one another, then just as Christ has accepted you in order to bring praise to God. That's the climate. That's the climate. If I can feel accepted, I feel wanted. If I will want it, I want you. If I want you. A lot of people get married because they want that person's love. It's not that they love that person, but they really like that person's love. That's why you create a climate. Create a climate that people want to join. Growing churches love. Growing churches love. And loving churches grow. It's got nothing to do with the seating or the air conditioning. Well, a little bit maybe, but it really is. So you position your church as a family and not as an institution. Even when you're announcing membership, even when you're inviting people to be part of your community, it, you're inviting them into a family. You're inviting them into a community. The relationship is not with the pastor. It's not with the building. It's not with the subscription. It's with the people. And if people can understand how important membership, you belong to me, I belong to you. You understand this. But what we are saying in Purpose Driven is, are we teaching the members this? You and I understand this and we know it's important. But is there a system where we are actually teaching everyone? Let's suggest to leaders for creating a warmer fellowship. What should we tell leaders? What should we tell pastors? What should we tell people organizing these, these uh, places? Campus pastors, service pastors, um, staff, you know, evangelists. Number one, be approachable and real. This is how you show love and acceptance. Be approachable and real. If you want to train your guys back home, tell them this. Be approachable, be real. Don't be standoffish, don't be non-available, don't, don't turn your back. Uh, be approachable, be real. Number two, learn names. Learn names. I know that's a challenge. You come to my church, we've got North Indians, South Indians, Northeast Indians, and I can't even tell how many N's are with G's together and P with, you know, I don't know what all is going on in that one name. That's why I just call everybody brother sister. It just makes, makes it so much easier. But you remember the names and it means so much to them. The other day I just, uh, I couldn't remember the lady's name but I remember the son's name, Joshua. And I said, hey, Joshua, are you okay with it? He got so excited. And he's only five. And she got appreciated. She, she appreciated. Pastor remembered my son's name. Joshua's not a hard name to remember. I mean, half the church is Joshua. Okay? But, <coughs> but it just means a lot. And especially those of us who have long, long names, you know, 14 syllables, find, find a way, you know, find a way to learn the names and stuff like that. I'm saying this with, with tremendous burden because I don't do it. <coughs> I struggle, I really, I, I remember faces. I'm like, hey, brother, where are you? How are you doing? Can I always go? <laughs> yeah, so, I, I can't preach this with a clean heart, honestly. But it, it does help. You know, you know, you, you feel loved when somebody, especially when they come back the second time. When they come back the second time. Okay, number two, number three. Personally greet people before and after service. Personally. Or oh, the worst thing is to come they sit, they get up and leave. Nobody talks to them. Nobody talks to them. I went to two churches. I went to two churches. Uh, one in Hong Kong and one uh, in the US. Uh, both, there's nothing to do with those countries, but it's just my experience because that's when I was traveling and I went out. If I'm in India, I'm in my own church. And I walked in. I don't know what it is about me, but I walked in. I stood at the back, I sat down, Came back and stood at the back, watched everybody, and I'm a pastor. I don't need to be told how to feel comfortable in a church, you know. And you, you figured my personality, right? I've already taken the chapatis and the, you know, pagodas and everything. I've, I've helped myself, okay? And I'm there. I know the senior pastor. I know, you know. So I'm. Nobody spoke to me. Nobody spoke. Nobody even said hi. And with all my 
personality and experience and and everything it felt horrible and i think purposely god allowed me to experience that just to come back and tell my church you know what hey that sucks that's terrible to be able to walk in walk out of a church of a church you know that's where you expect that warmth so this personal greeting circle that circle that not just from the from the pulpit personal greeting what did i say before you want to be publicly acknowledged but privately recognized okay generally we want to be told guests this morning love ah, great to have you with us we're doing coffee over there or we'd love to stay back we've got lunch for you or for you lunch is free that's a lot of love in that one statement you know uh, but personal personal so we need to have a certain bunch of people that are trained equipped ready to talk to the new people what did i tell you this is based on our strategy if new people are going to come then this is how things should be this is how we need to be prepared give a look a word a touch learn those three words a look a word a touch please be careful about the touch but a look a word a touch number 5 write in formal letters or whatsapp of course you got to be careful and there's got to be ways that you know we females uh messaging females men messaging men or the pastor sending a very generalized sort of a broadcast kind of thing but just send it was great to have you at church wonderful to have you this is our number if you need us for anything we're available huge humor with people it always breaks down the barriers celebrate diversity among your members celebrate diversity among your members never create a majority in our words and in the way in our pictures and in our even euphemisms and examples don't create a majority by that i mean oh by all, most of us are north indians here most of us uh, most of us are not, uh, immediately you have segregated everyone else who's not north indian and some north indians who don't want to be north indian okay immediately you've segregated so this is just just you know loved ones believers whatever you just friends those kind that kind of language is very very important celebrate the diversity it's great to have all of you here we're you know we're represented from every place every city every color great lovely lovely to have you okay that was number 1 number 1 was create a climate number 2 communicate the value of membership communicate the value of my celeb sell it to the congregation sell it to the new people this it is valuable to be a member of our church why what is the value what is the benefits what difference is it going to make to my life if i sign the membership covenant as one person once told me pastor what is the big value of me <coughs> signing in that one signature what is it be? why do you want me to sign a piece of paper my relationship is with god my citizenship is in heaven i don't need to sign that paper sounds good no it sounds very good you should have an answer for that and we need to get into why it's important to have membership and i'll explain that to you in just a bit we'll get into that so communicating the value of membership number 1 the three parts to following christ there is believing agreed three parts to following christ believe on the lord jesus christ and you shall be saved right of course but there is also belonging You are a member of God's very own family, and you belong in God's house. So God has not called you into a one-on-one with Him; He's called you into a family. He's called you into a community. And number three, there's a becoming. He's not called you. He's called you as you are, but He's not called you to stay as you are. You are to change, and you are to be changed into the likeness of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the end product of every believer. So from the very beginning, God decided that those who come to Him should become like His. son so the benefits to membership number 1 is it identifies me as a genuine believer ephesians 2:19 do you have that yeah it identifies me as a genuine believer if you're not a member of a church you're most probably not committed to christ you're only doing one out of the three number 2 it gives me a spiritual family for support so don't say pastor's not uh, uh visiting me nobody cares church is a bunch of hypocrites you know nobody want nobody knows what's going on in my life they were not there for me if you are not signed up if you are not present if you are not committed if you haven't made a deal with uh, with the church if you are not committed to the church don't expect the church to be committed to you 
So these are the tough conversations you need to have with people as they walk in. There are two types of people who, three types of people who walk in. People who are religious, committed, disciples of Christ, but from another church. They're moving in. They're coming in with all their baggage. Then there are those who have walked away from God and are coming back to God. And there are those who have never been churched. Right? So we have to understand how that whole thing works and how to draw everybody. Because I get mostly believers who are coming who are not into membership. Oh, oh no, Pastor, we just, we just want to attend. Okay. I also will only attend. I owe you nothing. There's no relationship here. And they need to understand the importance and that's what we're going to really focus on. You're going to talk about it as well. So, identify me as a genuine believer. Discuss, uh, sorry, uh, give, give me a spiritual uh, family for support. Provide a place to discover and use my gifts. Yeah, I need a place to serve. I need a people to serve. I need to decide what are the needs. Number four, it places me under the spiritual protection of godly leaders. The spiritual protection of godly leaders. A Christian is a child of God. Child of the father. The father has a family. And the family is the church. If you are not in a church, you are an orphan. Either you are an orphan or you are a runaway teenager. That also could be the case. Some people are runaway teenagers. And some people are orphans. They, 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 you don't come under the protection of a father. A protection of a, and a protection of a father is very, very important. It gives you identity. It gives you security. It gives you clarity. It gives you uh, discipline. It gives me, un, it, it places me under the spiritual protection of godly leaders. You see the scriptures there? The scriptures are there for you to go back. If this was a three-day conference, I would have loved to have gone into those scriptures. Don't have the time today. It gives me accountability, the kind of accountability I need to grow. If you're going to grow and become like the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not going to do that on your own. You're going to need accountability and the church is what gives you accountability. So help people see membership as a step of spiritual growth, not as an organizational ritual. Stop and think. Did you get that? Did you get that? Let's do that again. Help people see membership as a step of spiritual growth. I need this. I need this for my spiritual life. I need this for my spiritual growth. Not as an organizational ritual. Are you a member of this church? You can complete the, the church name. Are you a member of this church? No, I'm not. I'm a member of that church. And it's very organizational. It's, it's very, you know, like a very generic. You're not, it's, it's only people, you know. <clears throat> if I just said, you know, I'm married to a wife. You're married? Yeah, I'm married. Who you married? A wife. And I didn't nail it down. I'm going to go to the house. Right? There's got to be a name. There's got to be a ring. There's got to be... Uh, are you with me? You, right now, this may not sink in of how deep a change this is. But <laughs> when you go back and you start implementing membership and saying from now on we want everybody to understand the importance and commit to membership it's going to raise some problems so we can talk about that and I can tell you some of the horrendous mistakes I've made I've made some huge mistakes in that area but I've had some successes as well and we can talk about that in just, just a bit, right? Let's go to the third one. Develop a plan to assimilate new members. Develop a plan to assimilate new members. How are you going to ask new members to join? How are you going to get people in, connected, plugged in? These are the, some of the words we use. Ask questions like these. Number one, what does God expect from members of his church? How, what do we expect from our members right now? What kind of people already make up our congregation? How will that change in the next 5 to 10 years? What do our members value? What do they think is valuable? Why do they feel it's, they want to be part of our church? What are new members' greatest needs? Okay, there's a whole bunch of questions there. Questions that prospective members are going to ask. If I want to become a member of your church, these are the questions that are on my mind. Question number one, do I fit here? That's a question about acceptance. 
Does anybody want to know me? That's a question about friendship. Am I needed here? That's a question about value. What is the advantage of joining this particular church? That's a question of benefit. What is the required what is required of members? What do you want from me? That's expectations. You got that? Got that? Let's go over it again. Number one, acceptance, friendship, value, benefit, expectations. We need to answer these questions for people to want to become members of our church. They need to be convinced about that. Number three, develop a plan to assimilate members. And I will help you with that plan as we move forward. Number four, establish a required membership class. This is what we said right from the beginning. What does class stand for? Christian Life and Service Seminars. Okay, class. Establish a required membership class. You really have to prayerfully and lovingly and patiently do this because it's going to be tough. And I suggest you do it with the new people coming in. Don't try and go and tell the old people, okay, now you need to join a membership class. You'll, yeah, you'll have the Pakistan India division all over again because you don't want that. Um, put it into place and work with the new people, new people coming into church. How people join your church will determine their effectiveness as members for years. Did you get that? How people join your church will determine their effectiveness for years. Let me explain. If somebody just walks in, sits down, doesn't get committed, doesn't get questioned, doesn't get brought to a commitment for the church tomorrow they'll just take off tomorrow they'll take get involved in ministry when their character is questioned they'll take off they'll get involved in ministry but they'll also get involved in ministry everywhere else and when you call them to account they'll take off you know what i mean it just there's so many other things that get affected if membership is not sorted if membership is not sorted in marriage we sign a covenant we put a ring on when you're joining a organization you sign a covenant. When you're joining the army, you sign a covenant. When you join a gym, you sign a covenant. Whenever and everywhere you go, they sign on expectations. But the church, oh no, church should be, that's, you know, it's a place of grace. No, no, let's not have any expectations. Everybody's loving God. Every, no, uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, we know. We know. We've been in ministry for, we know that's not going to work out like that. We need to help people understand what is their commitment. Are you going to be with us for three years? What's your commitment to me? What's my commitment to you? You want to leave? No problem. Let's leave with a mutual understanding. You're moving to Bangalore? Wonderful, brother. Uh, can I recommend your church there for you? And then I write a letter to that. He's a great guy. His, his beautiful voice, tremendous uh, ministry, etc., etc. And you hand him over. That's how they did it in the first century church. That's how we started. Today, you walk in, walk out when you want don't want, don't like, walk out, bye-bye, come back, they disappear for six months, come back like guests, like guests they walk in and you're supposed to do what? Just open your arms, come brother, come, whoa, we were just, we couldn't think, we couldn't act, we were just waiting for you. What are we supposed to do? We're just supposed to be gracious, forgive, forget. No, no sense of, so what is the culture that we are developing when we don't have membership? Yes, Ochi. Yes, Ochi. You know, what are, what, are we, what are we teaching them by saying you don't need to sign? You don't need to be responsible. So it is very, very, very important, not just for the pastor, but for their own spiritual health. Because when you get into the actual program of discipleship, ministry, mission, we want you to succeed we want you to do well we want you to multiply we want you to be blessing but when we get tough on you when we are when we're dealing with you when you are correcting you if there's no basis if there's no foundation based on which this relationship is built they're gonna walk away and they have been walking away every time it gets a little tough every time you ask a straight question they walk away and then you say, oh, but the church should be a place where we speak the truth in love. Ah, even if you do speak the truth in love, they're going to walk away if there's no agreement. We'll discuss this in just a bit. Okay, 
So that's, that's something we really need to think about. These are questions you can think about. Establish a membership class. Now, if you look at the outline, in, the, in our Discovering Our Church Family, or what we call membership class or fellowship class, these are the areas we cover. We talk about God's purposes for your life, and we ask you to commit to that. We talk about why you need a church family. We talk about our statements, what do we believe, faith statement, practice statement, belief statement, etc. Then we talk about what it means to be a member and we cover all the basics, what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be baptized, what it means to have communion. And then we say the next step, would you like to become a member? Sometimes right there and then they sign, sometimes they sign later. Sometimes right there and then they get saved and sign. Some. So it becomes an evangelistic tool also. Sometimes you have people coming in. Is everyone listening to me? Yes. Sometimes you have people coming in and you don't know if they're saved. They seem to love Jesus. Their grandmother was a missionary. Everything seems okay. But they've never given their life to Christ. If they've not believed and given their life to Christ, they don't have the Holy Spirit. Now I'm getting into a little theology here. But they don't have the Holy Spirit. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, they're not going to have the strength to say no to sin. They're not going to be led in the purposes of God. They are going to be influenced by the flesh. Their own flesh and other people's flesh. They're going to bring in sin and contamination into the body of Christ. And all of that because you didn't clarify in the beginning whether they were saved or not. Now I'm not saying uh, which day. Tell me the day. Tell me the day and the time. Tell me the day. I'm not saying that much because I come from a background like that. If you don't remember the day, you're not saved only. <laughs> but there does need to be. Okay, fine. That's no problem. That's no problem. You don't know. Okay. Uh, let me explain. And in our membership notes we have, what does it mean to be a believer? What does it mean? When do you accept Christ? Admit that you are saying, believe, you know, etc, etc. Would you like to do that today? If you've not been, uh, not sure, would you like to do that today? Today would you like to acknowledge Christ as your savior? Or confirm that, yes, in fact, you are a follower of Christ. Kardo ya, khatam kardo, confirm kardo wahi pe. And let, then now you know. They know what a believer means. They know what it means to, uh, to walk in Christ. They know what they're committing to. Is everybody with me? It's important. Why we don't implement membership more seriously, I don't understand. We do membership more for hatch, patch and dispatch. That's why membership. You know, have to get married, have to you know, dedicate our babies and have to let out somebody over, over there. So, you know, church, that's, that's very religious. That's not what Christ is talking about. So when it comes to the, when, when the rubber meets the road and things get tough, if you're serious about discipleship, then membership is important. Because if there's no ring, when the, rough, when the waters get rough, people are going to walk out on you. Right? I'm not saying bind people. I'm not saying tie them into a thing. But there needs to be a mutual understanding. So these are the things we cover in our membership class. And the membership class notes also are available to you. And you can use those notes as is. You can strike the name out. You can put your church name. You can change theology a little bit here and there to fit your church's theology. But have a membership. Being purpose driven doesn't mean you say these words. Being purpose driven means you say, we're going to have a class. Sub batting here. I'm going to find out. Are you really saved? Do you understand what, what baptism is? Do you understand what communion is? Are you committed to the long run? To the long haul? Are you committed to going all the way with us? Yeah? And then you move forward. Being purpose driven means having commitment grow, baby steps. And the first commitment is that church, this church, my church. I'm going to that church. I come to this church. This is my church. That's membership. And when they come to that point, you have won a member. So that's establishing a required class. How are you going to do it? You could have three people meeting over the notes in Barista. You can do a proper class during, an, during the service or after service. On a special Saturday morning, you can have a class. I don't care. That's not purpose driven. How you do it is not purpose. Purpose driven is saying, no, we're going to have a class. And everybody who comes in is going to learn the purposes of God and learn the direction of this church. And Number five, develop, develop a membership covenant. Develop a membership covenant. Now, in your notes, I think you have Saddleback. And there is example on your table, example of your table of our covenant which I use. I'm not promoting my church. I'm just showing you examples of how we have implemented it. Okay. So the fellowship covenant is our membership covenant belonging to Christ. And the whole covenant is there. 
we, we help people understand. Let me read it to you and, it, and it'll, you'll see how simple it is. <clears throat> Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and been baptized and being in agreement with uh, this statement, that statement, whatever statement, uh, I've, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to uh, unite with the whatever church family, right? In doing so, I commit myself to God and to the others to do the following. One, two, three, four. Number one, I will protect the unity of my church. Oh, today this is so important. This is so important. I'll protect how? Acting in love toward one another, refusing to gossip. Whoo! Following the, can you imagine people making this commitment before they join the church? Yeah? Making, at the point of joining, saying, I will not gossip. I will love my people. I will, I will submit to the leaders, following the leaders. Number two, I will share the responsibility of my church. How? By praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched to attend, by warmly welcoming those who visit. Haha, <laughs> everybody's warmly welcoming people. Number three, I will serve the ministry of my church. How? By discovering my gifts and talents. See, you already pushed them into, you know, missions and ministry and whatnot. Uh, by discovering, by being equipped to serve by my pastors, by developing a servant's heart. Number four, I will support the testimony of my church. How? By attending, attending faithfully, they're committing to coming to church. By living a godly life, they're committing to be, have integrity, both at work and home. And by giving regularly, they're committing to tithing. So we make them make this commitment and you're not forcing anybody. You're helping them understand we're all committed to this. If you're going to be part of this family, you are also committed to this. Nobody's forcing you to join our family, but if you're going to join our family, these are the family rules. This is what we want to do because we want to honor Christ. So that's what we call our membership covenant. Okay, so you develop a membership covenant, change and chop and make it your own. Again, that's not purpose driven. Purpose driven is saying, okay, this is what we agree on. You may want to add or subtract a few things. Do it. But this is what we get. Number four, number six, create opportunities to build relationships, retreats. Conferences, coffees, get-togethers, barbecues, create, you remember we're talking about why people should join our church? Because this church loves people. They have lots of, it's not only Sunday church, Sunday church. There are so many opportunities to, to, to be part of a community. Number seven, encourage every, church, every member to join a small group. That's where they'll make friends. That's where they'll make deep relationships. Join a small group. Healthy churches grow larger and smaller at the same time. More people come in, more people get into small groups. Number eight, use multi multiple communication channels. Don't just, don't just say it on Sunday morning. Say it on WhatsApp. Say it on social media. Say it to the small group leaders. Constantly get behind them. Use every possible way. And lastly, make your members feel valued and special. How? I like these, but you can make up your own. Think of different ways to make your members feel special. If your members feel special, it will create climate for others to join. What are we talking about? Getting people to be convinced and to get on board to join a church, to join your church. Why? Because if you come to an agreement in the beginning, they'll be with you for the long haul. When you, when you hit a rough patch, it's the, it's the covenant that will see you through. There's something that you can reference back to saying, you made a covenant. You made a covenant. <coughs> You said we'll work through this. Come on, let's work through this. Let's stick together. So that's why membership. Not because I'll bury you or I'll bless your child or, you know, I'll marry you. Those, wo to ho jayega, wo kar lenge. But these are the main reasons. Would you jump into the question as to how does membership look like in your church? Is it already implemented? If not, what are the questions or things you need to be thinking through with regard to membership?